Among the twelve hundred poems which have emanated from my too prolific pen, there are some forty or fifty which treat entirely of that emotion which has been denominated the grand passion, love. A few of those are of an extremely fiery character. When I issued my collection known as Maureen and other poems, I purposely omitted all save two or three of these. I had been frequently accused of writing only sentimental verses, and I took pleasure and pride in presenting to the public a volume which contained more than one hundred poems upon other than sentimental topics. But no sooner was the book published than letters of regret came to me from friends and strangers, and from all quarters of the globe, asking why this or that love poem had been omitted. These regrets were repeated to me by so many people that I decided to collect and issue these poems in a small volume to be called Poems of Passion. By the word passion, I meant the grand passion of love. To those who take exception to the title of the book, I would suggest a reference to Webster's definition of the word. Since this volume has caused so much agitation throughout the entire country, and even sent a tremor across the Atlantic into the old world, I beg leave to make a few statements concerning some of the poems. The excitement of mingled horror and amaze seems to centre upon four poems, namely Delilah, Advinum, Conversion and Communism. Delilah was written and first published in 1877. I had been reading history and became stirred by the power of such women as Apasia and Cleopatra over such grand men as Antony, Socrates and Pericles. Under the influence of this feeling, I dashed off Delilah, which I meant to be an expression of the powerful fascination of such a woman upon the memory of a man, even as he neared the hour of death. If the poem is immoral, then the history which inspired it is immoral. I consider it my finest effort. Ad Finem was written in 1878. I think there are few women of strong character and affections who cannot, from either experience or observation, understand the violent intensity of regret and despair which sometimes takes possession of the human heart after the loss by death, fate, or the force of circumstances of someone very dear. In Ad Finem, I intended to give voice to this very common experience of almost every heart. Many noble women have since told me that the poem was true to life. It is not, as many people have willfully or stupidly construed it, a bit of poetical advice to womankind to barter the joys of paradise for just one kiss. It is simply an illustration of a moment of turbulent anguish and vehement despair, such moments of unreasoning and overwhelming sorrow as the most moral people may experience during a lifetime. In communism, I endeavoured to use a new simile in illustrating that somewhat hackneyed theme of the supremacy of love over reason, and simply to carry out my idea I represented the violent uprising of the communist emotions against King Reason. Conversion was suggested to me by the remark of a gentleman friend. In speaking to me of the woman he loved, he said, I have always been a sceptic regarding the existence of heaven, but I am so much happier in my love for this woman than I ever supposed it possible for me to be on earth, that I begin to believe that the tales of heavenly raptures may be true. I embodied his idea in the poem which has brought, with a few others, so much censure and criticism upon this volume, although it contains nearly seventy-five other selections quite irreproachable in character, however faulty they may be in construction. It is impossible to pursue a successful literary career and follow the advice of all one's best friends. I have received severe censure from my orthodox friends for writing liberal verses. My liberal friends condemn my devout and religious poems as aiding superstition. My early temperance verses were pronounced fanatical trash by others. With all due thanks and appreciation for the kind motives which interest so many dear friends in my career, I yet feel compelled to follow the light which my own intellect and judgment cast upon my way, rather than any one of the many conflicting rays which other minds would lend me. Ella Wheeler End of Preface Love's Language of Poems of Passion this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan. Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Love's Language. How does love speak? In the faint flush upon the tell-tale cheek, and in the pallor that succeeds it, 
by the quivering lid of an adverted eye, the smile that proves the patent to a sigh, thus doth love speak. How does love speak? By the uneven heart throbs and the freak of bounding pulses that stand still and ache, while new emotions, like strange barges, make along vain channels their disturbing course. Still as the dawn, and with the dawn's swift force, thus doth love speak. How does love speak? In the avoidance of that which we seek, the sudden silence and reserve when near, the eye that glistens with an unshed tear, the joy that seems the counterpart of fear, as the alarmed heart leaps in the breast, and knows and names and greets its godlike guest, thus doth love speak. How does love speak? In the proud spirit suddenly grown meek, the haughty heart grown humble, in the tender and unnamed light that floods the world with splendour, in the resemblance which the fond eyes trace, in all fair things to one beloved face, in the shy touch of hands that thrill and tremble, in looks and lips that can no more dissemble, thus doth love speak. How does love speak? In the wild words that uttered seem so weak, they shrink ashamed to silence, in the fire glance strikes with glance, swift flashing high and higher, like lightnings that precede the mighty storm. In the deep, soulful stillness, in the warm, impassioned tide that sweeps through throbbing veins, between the shores of keen delight and pains, in the embrace where madness melts in bliss, and in the convulsive rapture of a kiss, thus doth love speak. End of Love's Language Impatience of Poems of Passion. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan. Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Impatience. How can I wait until you come to me? The once fleet mornings linger by the way, their sunny smiles touched with malicious glee at my unrest. They seem to pause and play like truant children while I sigh and say, how can I wait? How can I wait? Of old the rapid hours refused to pause or loiter with me long. But now they idly fill their hands with flowers and make no haste, but slowly stroll among the summer blooms, not heeding my one song. How can I wait? How can I wait? The nights alone are kind. They reach forth to a future day and bring sweet dreams of you to people all my mind and time speeds by on light and airy wing. I feast upon your face, I no more sing. How can I wait? How can I wait? The morning breaks the spell a pitying night has flung upon my soul. You are not near me, and I know full well my heart has need of patience and control. Before we meet, hours, days, and weeks must roll. How can I wait? How can I wait? O oh, love, how can I wait until the sunlight of your eyes shall shine upon my world that seems so desolate, until your hand clasp warms my blood like wine, until you come again, O oh, love of mine, how can I wait? End of Impatience Communism of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Communism When my blood flows calm as a purling river, when my heart is asleep and my brain has sway, it is then that I vow we must part forever, that I will forget you and put you away, out of my life as a dream is banished, out of the mind when the dreamer awakes. That I know it will be when the spell has vanished, better for both of our sakes. When the court of the mind is ruled by reason, I know it is wiser for us to part. But love is a spy who is plotting treason, in league with that warm red rebel, the heart. They whisper to me that the king is cruel, that his reign is wicked, his law a sin, and every word they utter is fuel to the flame that smoulders within. And on nights like this, when my blood runs riot, with the fever of youth and its mad desires, when my brain in vain bids my heart be quiet, when my breast seems the centre of lava fires, 
Oh, then is the time when most I miss you. And I swear by the stars and my soul and say that I will have you and hold you and kiss you, though the whole world stands in the way. And like communists, as mad as disloyal, my fierce emotions roam out of their lair. They hate King Reason for being royal. They would fire his castle and burn him there. O oh, love, they would clasp you and crush you and kill you in the insurrection of uncontrol. Across the miles, does this wild war thrill you that is raging in my soul? End of Communism The Common Lot of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox The Common Lot It is a common fate, a woman's lot, to waste on one the riches of her soul, who takes the wealth she gives him, but cannot repay the interest, and much less the whole. As I look up into your eyes and wait for some response to my fond gaze and touch, it seems to me there is no sadder fate than to be doomed to loving overmuch. Are you not kind? Ah, yes, so very kind, so thoughtful of my comfort and so true. Yes, yes, dear heart, but I, not being blind, know that I am not loved as I love you. One tenderer word, a little longer kiss, will fill my soul with music and with song. And if you seem abstracted, or I miss the heart tone from your voice, my world goes wrong. And oftentimes you think me childish, weak, when at some thoughtless word the tears will start. You cannot understand how aught you speak has power to stir the depths of my poor heart. I cannot help it, dear, I wish I could, or feign indifference where I now adore. For if I seemed to love you less, you would, manlike I have no doubt, love me the more. Tis a sad gift, that much applauded thing, a constant heart, for fact doth daily prove that constancy finds oft a cruel sting, while fickle natures win the deeper love. End of the Common Lot Individuality of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Individuality Oh yes, I love you, and with all my heart, Just as a weak woman loves her own, Better than I love my beloved art, Which till you came, reigned royally alone, My king, my master, since I saw your face, I have dethroned it, and you hold that place. I am as weak as other women are. Your frown can make the whole world like a tomb. Your smile shines brighter than the sun by far. Sometimes I think there is not space or room in all the earth for such a love as mine, and it soars up to breathe in realms divine. I know that your desertion or neglect could break my heart, as women's hearts do break. If my wan days had nothing to expect from your love's splendour, all joy would forsake the chambers of my soul. Yes, this is true. And yet, and yet, one thing I keep from you. There is a subtle part of me which went into my long-pursued and worshipped art. Though your great love fills me with such content, no other love finds room now in my heart. Yet that rare essence was my art's alone. Thank God you cannot grasp it, tis mine own. Thank God, I say, for while I love you so, with that vast love, as passionate as tender, I feel an exultation, as I know I have not made you a complete surrender. Here is my body, bruise it if you will, and break my heart. I have that something still. You cannot grasp it, seize the breath of morn, or bind the perfume of the rose as well. God put it in my soul when I was born. It is not mine to give away or sell, or offer up on any altar shrine. It was my arts, and when not arts, tis mine. For love's sake I can put the art away, or anything which stands twixt me and you. But that strange essence God bestowed, I say, to permeate the work he gave to do, and it cannot be drained, dissolved, or sent through any channel save the one he meant. 
End of Individuality Friendship After Love of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Friendship After Love After the fierce midsummer all ablaze has burned itself to ashes and expires in the intensity of its own fires, there come the mellow, mild St. Martin days, crowned with the calm of peace, but sad with haze. So after love has led us, till he tires of his own throes and torments and desires, comes large-eyed friendship with a restful gaze. He beckons us to follow, and across cool verdant vales we wander free from care. Is it a touch of frost lies in the air? Why are we haunted with a sense of loss? We do not wish the pain back or the heat, and yet, and yet, these days are incomplete. End of Friendship After Love Queries of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Queries Well, how has it been with you since we met that last strange time of a hundred times? When we met to swear that we could forget, I your caresses and you my rhymes, the rhyme of my lays that rang like a bell, and the rhyme of my heart with yours as well. How has it been since we drank that last kiss that was bitter with lees of the wasted wine, when the tattered remains of a threadbare bliss and the worn-out shreds of a joy divine, with the year's best dreams and hopes, were cast into a rag-bag of the past? Since time the rag-buyer hurried away, with a chuckle of glee at a bargain made, did you discover, like me, one day that, hid in the folds of those garments frayed, were priceless jewels and diadems, the soul's best treasures, the heart's best gems? Have you, too, found that you could not supply the place of those jewels so rare and chaste? Do all that you borrow or beg or buy prove to be nothing but skilful paste? Have you found pleasure, as I found art, not all sufficient to fill your heart? Do you sometimes sigh for the tattered shreds of the old delight that we cast away, and find no worth in the silken threads of newer fabrics we wear today? Have you thought the bitter of that last kiss better than sweets of a later bliss? What idle queries! or yes or no. Whatever your answer, I understand that there is no pathway by which we can go back to the dead past's wonderland, and the gems he purchased from me, from you, there is no rebuying from time the Jew. End of Queries Upon the Sand of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Upon the Sand All love that has not friendship for its base Is like a mansion built upon the sand. Though brave its walls as any in the land, And its tall turrets lift their heads in grace, Though skilful and accomplished artists trace Most beautiful designs on every hand, And gleaming statues in dim niches stand, And fountains play in some flower-hidden place. Yet, when the frowning east or sudden gust Of adverse fate is blown, or sad rains fall, day in, day out, against its yielding wall. Lo, the fair structure crumbles to the dust. Love, to endure life's sorrow and earth's woe, needs friendship's solid masonwork below. End of Upon the Sand Reunited of Poems of Passion This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Joy Chan Poems of Passion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Reunited Let us begin, dear love, where we left off. Tie up the broken threads of that old dream, and go on happy as before, and seem lovers again, though all the world may scoff. Let us forget the graves which lie between our parting and our meeting, and the tears that rusted out the goldwork of the years, the frost that fell upon our garden's green. Let us forget the cold, malicious fate, who made our loving hearts her idle toys, 
and once more revel in the old sweet joys of happy love. Nay, it is not too late. Forget the deep ploughed furrows in my brow, forget the silver gleaming in my hair. Look only in my eyes, oh darling, there, the old love shone no warmer then than now. Down in the tender deeps of thy dear eyes I find the lost sweet memory of my youth, bright with the holy radiance of thy truth, and hallowed with the blue of summer skies. Tie up the broken threads and let us go, like reunited lovers, hand in hand, back and yet onward to the sunny land of our to-be, which was our long ago. End of Reunited Today's reading by Alex Foster www.alexfoster.me.uk Dulci et decorum est by Wilfred Owen Bent double, like old beggars under sacks, knocked kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, blood shod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of tired, outstripped five nines that dropped behind. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering, like a man in fire or lime, Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in, and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est, pro patria mori.